Hello and welcome to this session of operator overloading in Python. Today, we're going to talk about this concept and how it is being implemented in Python. This concept is not new in any programming language. It is a pretty common concept in languages like C++ and Java. But today we will focus on how you can perform operator overloading in Python. So what's in it for us today? What we will understand what is operator overloading and how to overload the operators in Python. We will perform these activities in the Jupyter Notebook. Now, what is operator overloading? Python operators work for built-in classes in a predefined operational way. But the same operator behaves differently for objects of different classes. So you can make the operator work differently basis the requirement you have and the objects you have defined. So for example, the plus operator, which is the most commonly used operator, will perform arithmetic addition on two numbers or it can merge two lists or if performed on two strings, it concatenates the two strings. So it means the programming language automatically understands that in which context you are using the plus operator. This feature in Python that allows the same operator to have different meanings according to the context, according to the objects which are calling it or according to the data types which are being used in that operator, it is called as operator overloading. So if you see in this example, eight and seven are the operands and the plus sign is the operator sign. So that is the whole goal of this whole exercise that we will show you how you can change the meaning of the plus operator depending on the kind of objects or kind of operands you're using along with it. Now how to overload the operators in Python? Consider we have two objects b1 and b2 of a class batsman. Now we must add these objects with a binary plus operator. So now the task in hand is that we use the plus operator to add objects which is not possible until and unless we overload this operator. Otherwise it will throw an error because the compiler does not know how to add two objects. It only knows how to add primitive data types like int, strings, etc. So basically we will define a method for an operator that process and that process is called operator overloading. So in the example which we will be showing you, we will be taking two objects of batsman1 and batsman2 and we will be using two scores per batsman and then we will add them. So we'll, we'll discuss that in the examples we will show you. Now, we can overload all the defined operators. So there's no limitation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, greater than, less than. So there are certain magic methods or we can call it as the primitive methods or special functions that are automatically invoked when an associated operator is being called. So basically, if you have to do the operator overloading, you basically have to override these methods in your Python program. And that's how you will be able to override or overload the primitive implementations of these functions written in the compiler of Python. So let's see here in our example, right? For example, when we use the plus operator, the magic method underscore underscore add underscore underscore is automatically invoked in which the operation for the plus operator is defined. Now we are overloading it. And in the example, you can see we are adding the first score of each batsman, right? So we have customized the addition function. We are adding the first score of the first batsman with the first score of the second batsman. And then we are printing the total. So in our case, we are adding and printing the first one 66 plus 23 or if you print b3 dot s2 you will see the sum total of 78 plus 59 so the thing to be noted is this function add function where you are adding self dot s1 plus second dot s1 
and you are adding s self dot s2 plus second dot s2 and that is the whole customization what you have done in order to add two objects of patch mode. Now let's take a look at some of the examples of operator overloading we have just discussed. So we will be executing some examples in our Jupyter notebook. Now what I'm going to show you is about a class batsman which we discussed in the presentation and I'm going to define the init function and initialize score one and score two of the batsman. Now I'm going to override the magic function add and add the score one and score two of the batsman separately. Now with this over operator overloading, when I will pass object for addition, then only now my object will understand that it has to add score one of first batsman with the score one of second batsman and score two of first batsman with the score two of the second batsman. So we will see how. So what we are doing is one in the add operator, we are adding the scores encapsulating in a new object batsman and then returning the object B3. Now let's create object B1, batsman 1 and batsman 2. Now I am adding two objects batsman 1 and batsman 2. Now without operator overloading, if would, I would not have done operator overloading of add, then this would have failed because plus operator does not understand the objects batsman. But with overloading done, now I can independently print the score of the new batsman, the batsman's, the B3 object, sum of score 1 of batsman 1 and uh, score 1 of batsman 2, which is 66 plus 23. Okay, so now let's take an example of a simple operator function. Like for example, I'm going to simply create a variable A with value 44 and variable B with 7 and print A plus B. And if I run this, this is the expected output. Python plus operator knows that A and B are primitive int variables. So it's able to add that. Now behind the scenes when we printed a plus b actually this is what happened int primitive int variables add operator overloaded method got called and a and b got passed and 51 was calculated. So it's automatically done because this function is implicitly written in the python language. Similarly. I can also do this thing. I can create a int variable and a float variable. And if I try to print it, I will get the expected output, which is 50.5 because the plus operator accepts the int and a float variable. It's implicitly written. So that is also allowed. Now let's take another example of string operators string variables addition now irrespective of my uh, i am giving numerical values in the string print a plus b in string is is meant to do concatenation so 446.5 four, it's a simple string concatenation what python has done and implicitly python is invoking the string method add operator overloaded which is overloaded and invoking it.
Now I would like to show you like suppose for example I do an addition between an int and a string variable right and I say print a plus b now this operation is not permissible I will get an error because ideally with a plus operator either I can say int 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 float or string string int and string is not allowed because it mathematically or functionally does not make any sense. That's not how the way the Python plus operator has been overloaded. Now, let's try other operations on objects. Let's create a class person and I'll create a init function to initialize height and weight. Okay, now Print 8 means it's just printing the primitive data type. Now I want to print an object of class person. Now as I have not overridden the string uh, magic function, Python will not understand what to print. So it will only print the object. It will It is printing the person object, which definitely uh, you can't uh, figure any sense, make out any sense out of it. But as we have not overridden the str function, the magic function, that's why Python is printing the object. Now, in order to print a meaningful output, what I have to do is, in this class only, I can override the str magic function, correct? And I just have to say format self.height and wait. So now, when I will run this, see, Instead of object now, the output is 5.5 comma 62, which are the input parameters which I sent in this object. So if you remove this, you get the object print. And if you add this, you get the actual meaningful output. And that is the purpose of overloading. Now, let's take another example. We are creating a class Jaguar defining the init method and overriding the subtract function. Okay. Then I am making another class body and writing the init function. Now let's create an object of Jaguar and Audi. Now if I will do a print call x minus y, it will invoke the subtract function of the Jaguar class because it's the first variable and it's going to subtract the mileage of Jaguar minus the mileage of Audi. And that's how you're getting the output. Three. So ultimately, in this scenario, the subtract function of Jaguar got called. It took the variable value of 18 and 15, which is it's X and Y. And that did the operation. Similarly, I will now overwrite the greater than function for checking who has a greater mileage, Jaguar or Audi. So I'll overwrite the init function. Then now I'm going to overwrite the greater than function. Take values in a variable and write the condition. If x1 is greater than 1, y1, then return true. Else, return false. Okay, so I have overridden the greater than function, gt function. I, I'll place, again create my class or d. 
define the init. Okay. Initialize the variables like I did earlier in a similar fashion. Create objects, Jaguar and Audi. Now I am going to perform the check of whether the object of Jaguar, which is mileage check, is greater than Audi or not. And as I have initialized the variables of Jaguar with 18 mileage and Audi with 15, my expected output should be that Jaguar mileage is greater. And that's what it is. Now, this has been only possible because I have overridden the GT uh, method in the Jaguar class. So I think this might have been a good learning exercises for you. And you were able to understand the concepts of operator overloading. I hope you had a great learning session and I'll see to you next time. Thank you. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.